This week we're looking at supply chain management. And so one of the things we have to look at with supply chain management is the importance of managing your supply chain and how you choose your partners. Who is going to be in your supply chain? So let's look at two examples here. Let's look at Apple and McDonald's. So when Apple released the A9 chip into their iPhone, they used two different suppliers. They used a company called TMSC and Samsung, both to provide the A9 chip. Now, the challenge with this is that when people buy new technology, there's always people who like to kind of take it apart and um, look at the different specs and the pieces within it. And, you know, they have videos on YouTube that everyone watches. So it starts to get out that when you look inside of the iPhone and you look at this A9 chip, the TSMC and the Samsung chips don't look the same. Okay, in fact, the TSMC chip was actually larger in size. Well, if you hear that the memory component of your phone might be bigger or smaller, the perception of the customer base is, oh, well, that must mean more memory, or that must mean that my phone works faster. And so there starts to be a perception by the customer base that you're getting different a quality product depending on if your iPhone has an A9 chip from Samsung or versus TMSC in it. So Apple then goes on this PR campaign to tell people that it doesn't actually matter which A9 chip your phone has, they perform exactly the same. When you go and buy an iPhone itself, you can't actually see from the packaging what, who made the chip that's inside of it. But what started to happen is that people believed that the TSMC, which had the larger A9 chip, must be a better performing iPhone, must have more memory, and so they start to demand just that version of the iPhone. And of course, that's a component with inside the iPhone, the Apple Store has no idea. Well, even if the Apple Store did have an idea as to which phones had which chip in them before they unbox them, what happens to your stock if your customers only want some of your product? So they only want half the iPhones that you've made, not the other half. Well, the problem is, is one half sells out, the other half the inventory doesn't move. And now you have a bunch of inventory that you can't sell, that people don't want, you have to start discounting, things like that. So it's quite a problem for a company if there's a perception that oh, one of their items in a product is better than the other. And so it's important when you manage your supply chain uh, to consider that. If I'm going to have more than one supplier, is what they are producing the same? Is it perceived as the same by the customer base? Now, there are benefits to having multiple suppliers if there is supply chain disruptions, for example. So let's say that your product is coming out of one, one of your suppliers is in Korea, the other is in Japan. Uh, if there is an event that impacts um, Japan but not Korea, then you can keep uh, producing your product and without huge supply chain disruptions, you could still get your product to your customers. So there's a benefit to having multiple suppliers in case something happens. If there's a fire at one factory, you can still have production at the other. You're not completely at a standstill and not able to sell anything. The risk, though, is that the more suppliers you have, do people perceive the different um, items differently? Or um, what kind of information sharing are you doing? Because the more different suppliers you have, the more information is being provided to more different companies. And those different companies might then go and work with your competitor. So there's an information risk there. Now, let's look at another example, which is McDonald's. So in 2013, McDonald's stopped serving Heinz ketchup at their restaurants. Well, why would McDonald's stop serving Heinz ketchup? Well, the reason that they stopped serving Heinz ketchup is because at that time, Burger King bought Heinz ketchup. So do you want your primary competitor to be the company that's supplying you with some of your inventory and materials? Well, the challenge is, is that 
Heinz Ketchup, as a supplier of ketchup for McDonald's, would know how much ketchup McDonald's goes through. So they would have information as to the inner workings of McDonald's, how much um, uh, revenue they're, they're creating, how much customers they're seeing, how much product they're selling, uh, because that would be tied to the demand for the ketchup. And so do you want your competitor to have that level of information? So as we think about who our suppliers are and how much suppliers we have, we have to consider a number of different aspects for that. So in this level, we're going to be looking at um, what do we look for in a supplier and what are some of the considerations with managing our supply chain, including the level of information sharing.